Today we're going to take a look at how to write electron configurations and learn about a new way to show the ways in which electrons are arranged by using orbital notations. After today, you will be able to write electron configurations in proper long form notation, write orbital notations for certain elements in their proper notation, identify elements from their electron configuration or orbital notation. Recall, an electron configuration is a method of indicating the arrangement of electrons in a particular element or ion. Electrons will fill the first energy level before the second, before the third, etc. Within an energy level, you want to fill the S, the P, the D, then the F. And remember, for a neutral atom, the protons equals the number of electrons, which is also the same as the atomic number. For example, if I asked you to write the electron configuration for hydrogen, it would look something like this. You'd first have to count how many electrons hydrogen has, and you can obtain that from the periodic table, and you see that it's atomic number one. So therefore, it has one electron. This is the electron configuration for hydrogen. As you might expect, the one in front is the energy level. The S is the sublevel. And the one, well, that's the number of electrons. So to write 1s1 is the electron configuration for hydrogen. Let's write the electron configuration for helium. So helium has two electrons. So it would look something like this, 1s2, where again the 1 is the energy level, the s is the sublevel, and the 2 is the number of electrons. Let's move on to lithium. Lithium has three electrons. If you remember from what we talked about in the last lesson, that in the first energy level, there is only one type of sublevel, and that's S. You may also remember that all S's can hold two electrons at most. So if you notice, to have three electrons, two electrons already fill the first energy level. So that's why you now have to go out to the second. And so it would be written as 1s2, and that takes care of two electrons, and then 2s1 would take care of the third electron. Now, there's something called the off-bow principle, which basically says that electrons will enter sublevels with the lowest energy first. And we talked about that a little bit in our last presentation. Let's talk about nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons. The electron configuration for nitrogen would look something like this. So again, we have 1s2, that is now full. The second energy level has both S and P sublevels available. So this is going to be 2S2, and then the S2 is now full. So then you have to go out to 2P. So then it's going to be 2P3. And then when you add this superscript and this one and this one, you get a total of seven electrons. Let's try it for magnesium. Magnesium has 12 electrons. And so his configuration would look something like this. So notice it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, because remember all p's can hold six electrons, but then write the s and the p for the second energy levels full. So you have to go further out. So now you'll have to go to 3s2. For elements with more than 18 electrons, sublevels actually turn out to be filled out of order. But fortunately, the lowest energy sublevels are still filled first. So there's an energy level diagram for you to take a look at. And this is what the diagram looks like. So as I mentioned, the electrons are going to be filled in a certain order. So 1s, and then we have to fill into 2s. And then from 2s into 2p. and then from 2p into 3s, and then from 3s into 3p, 
and then from 3P into 4S. And then you might, as, as you might have seen, you might expect to go from 3P to 3D. Well, in fact, you saw that it went to 4S. But again, 4S is still lower energy than 3D. And so that's why it's filling out of order. You will, of course, have this energy diagram to use if you were to be assessed on this because there's no possible way that you can know the order. However, you will be taught in a little while a trick to help you, but it won't be in this lesson. Notice the way the electrons are filling in. We'll talk about that momentarily. But this is definitely, if you don't have this already completed, this is something you're going to want to fill in on your paper. So I'm going to go a little bit faster now so you can get the idea. So again, you won't have to memorize this, fortunately. If you were, like I said, to be uh, assessed on this, you would definitely have this ac accessible to you. But you may be taught a trick to help you. Ta-da! Okay. So, let's use that to write the electron configuration for potassium. So, potassium has 19 electrons. So, we go from 1s to 2s to 2p to 3s and then 3p, and then as I mentioned, you may think that you're going to 3d. Well, in fact, that is not the case because, again, 4s is a little bit lower in energy than 3d, and so that's why this would be the appropriate electron configuration for potassium. Let's try it for an even bigger element, like cobalt, 27 electrons. This is what it would look like. So notice we go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, and then we go back to the 3d. And notice it would be 3d7, even though d has the ability to hold 10 electrons. Now let's talk about how to write something called orbital notations. So orbital notations are a little different than electron configurations because it's more, again, of a pictorial representation. It now uses circles, or sometimes, depending on what you're looking at, it could also use lines to represent atomic orbitals. And there is also a label underneath that indicates the sublevel and energy level. So let me tell you, show you what I'm talking about. So you could have one electron um, look something like this, where you have a line and an arrow up, or a circle and an arrow up. You could even have two electrons and then within a circle. But there are a lot of different variations. So just keep in mind that these arrows are supposed to represent um, uh, electrons, and then the circle or the line is supposed to represent the atomic orbital. So for example, hydrogen. I said I want you to draw the um, orbital notation, it would look something like this, where you have a circle and then an arrow up. I've also seen it so that you have like slashes. You could also have a slash. It just depends on most likely what your teacher wants or what's in your textbook. This is lithium. Notice that lithium includes both the circles and the labels. Notice there's no number of electrons written in the upper right-hand corner, and that's for good reason. You do want to make sure that you avoid writing the electrons in the upper right-hand corner because, again, these are orbital notations. Now, you may have noticed in the animation before that um, I drew these electrons so that they one is going up and one is going down. Well, that is called the Pauli Principle. So these electrons, right, they're moving and they're spinning. So basically we say that the Pauli principles where atomic orbitals can, again, only have two electrons in them, and they have to be opposite in terms of their spin. So that's what the up and the down means. Here's another example, nitrogen. Again, it has seven electrons, and you may notice that we go from 1s to 2s, and then when we go to 2p, you may wonder, hey, why are they all going up? Well, that's another kind of rule for our electron configurations and orbital notations. So this is called Hund's rule. So Hund's rule says in any sublevel with more than one orbital, you have to put one electron into each orbital before putting two electrons into any one. So um, an analogy to this would be, let's say um, there's 24 students in the class and I have 24 lollipops. 
I'm not going to give the first three students two lollipops before I give everyone else one. And so that's the same idea with Hun's rule. The last part of this presentation is about identifying elements from their electron configurations or orbital notations. So for example, if an element is neutral, again, the number of electrons equals the number of protons, which is also the same as the atomic number. So for example, if you were given this electron configuration, you would have to count up the number of electrons that you have in this configuration, and then you could match that to the atomic number on the periodic table. So for example, there's a total of 10 electrons here, and so that has to be neon. Here's another orbital notation. It looks like we have a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 electrons. So if we look on the periodic table, that will correspond to sodium. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as to how we will be using electron configurations and orbital notations in our class. As usual, it is so important for you to practice, so make sure you do this worksheet. Thank you so much for watching.